Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Osborne Pro TV. My name is Rob and today I'm going to better show you how to secure SMB in your environment. Now SMB provides authentication as well as message encryption by default. However, we on our own we need to enable SMB signing. And what this does is perform a type of integrity so that the data being transferred is not, we can verify it's not being uh, modified before it reaches its destination. And doing this also enables pre-logon authentication in which the recipient uh, has to uh, verify itself before that SMB communication will take place. Uh, so to demonstrate that real quick right now, I'm going to show uh, Responder. So what Responder is, is a tool that uh, creates imp an, imp it's imp an impersonator. And what it does, or what I'm going to do here, is basically set up an SMB server to capture NTLM hashes. So to do that, I would simply do Python Responder. Um, listen on my interface, ETH0. ETH and as you can see here, I have my SMB server, server listening. And this is the IP address of my attack machine here. Now, if I go to a machine that has SMB signing enabled and try to go, I, the authentication is the pre logon authentication is failing, so I can't get there. However, if I go to my domain controller, which I do not have this enabled on right now, and I try to do that same thing, we can see that I'm prompted for credentials, even though I didn't enter them. It is, uh, I'm still able to obtain the NTLM version 2 hash. Now, this hash, an attacker can attempt to crack it, so if you have a strong password, um, hopefully this is as far as they'll get. If you have NTLM enabled in your environment, you want to try to disable that wherever you can, and I'm going to cover that in these group policy settings in just a moment. And what that does is add an extra layer to this where an attacker can pass that NTLM hash to a remote device and use it to authenticate themselves. And if they can do this, they can execute um, payloads on the remote machine and take over it, obtaining a reverse shell back to the attack machine. Uh, so that's the danger there. So on my domain control, I'm just going to close this out since we've showed that demonstration. Um, another thing I'm going to mention here before getting to um, the GPO part of this is that we want to disable SMB version 1 in your environment. Microsoft recommends doing this. Um, else it, SMB version 1 is a legacy protocol. We're currently at SMB version 3. Uh, just as a side note, SMB version 2 is still usable and still considered safe. Uh, SMB version 1 is not, and this is mostly because of a WannaCry uh, vulnerability that came out not too long ago. And what that was was basically ransomware that cost a lot of companies a lot of money. There's also the NSA, there's patches for it now, even on Windows 7. Uh, but the NSA came up with the Eternal Blue exploit. And what that was was a way to gain uh, system access to a machine just because the SMB version pro 1 protocol was offered on it. Um, so to disable SMB version 1 in our environment, we first want to enable audit logging. And we're doing this so that we can discover any legacy devices that might still be using it, such as printers, backup appliances, uh, virtualization, things of that nature. And uh, so this would be the command that we issue in PowerShell. I'm going to have a, this in the description. And what this does, if we can see in my event log here under event viewer, application log, applications and service logs, Microsoft, Windows, and SMB server, under the audit section, we're going to be able to see any connections made using SMB version 1. Any that we find, we want to either upgrade the firmware on those devices or limit access to that SMB version 1 device as much as possible. So that is how to discover that. As soon as you find what devices are there and you can make modifications appropriately, you want to disable that. If you're on just a home computer, uh, you will be able to do this uh, with the command. I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Um, and what this does, get Windows optional feature, online feature name, SMB1 protocol, and that disables the use of uh, SMB1 on your local client device. If you're in a domain, we can push this out through group policy. 
Now, this was something that was offered later on. So there's a group policy template that Microsoft offers. I'm going to have this link in the description as well. If you're familiar with their Microsoft documentation, it can be atrocious. Um, so in their docs, they call this Windows 10 version 1703. However, I believe they meant 1803. Either way, the group policy ADMX templates are in here. So you want to download this. Notice I have this in my downloads folder and I it's a zip file so I unzipped it to the same location and inside these folders I want to go to my templates directory. So inside there you'll notice I'll have a collection of ADML and ADMX files. So what I would need to do is copy for one all the ADMX files first and I'm going to copy those and then we would go to C Windows policy definitions and we paste these in here and then the ADML files are language files so we would go back and copy those and then we would put these in the en-us file which is English United States so we would go in here and as you can see the ADML files are there and we would paste them in there if you have group policy management editor open already, simply close it and reopen it and you'll be able to access the settings provided by these templates. <clears throat> to get there, we can open any group policy setting we have here. I have my SMB settings here. So I would right click and select edit. That opens my editor and as you can see this is my settings for SMB version 1 and the location of these settings is under administrative templates and these are the ones that we added laps MSS security guide and MSS legacy uh, since we're in here it's time to start the group policy section so if we go into MS security guide notice I have configure SMB version 1 server client driver and client all disabled uh, in order to disable SMB with group policy, just disable all these and that's going to do that for you. Uh, there's a few other uh, settings we have in here to cover. So um, I've covered a few extra settings in here as well related to basically authentication and such. Uh, so the first thing we'll cover here uh, will be we did we're going to cover Kerberos policy. So the Kerberos policy is affecting machines really. Uh, this is the CIS benchmark recommendation uh, values that they have and I'm going to cover them real quick. So if we go to computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, or yeah, Windows settings, security settings, account policies, Kerberos policy. And these are the settings we have there. So enforce user logon restrictions, we want to enable that. And then we're defining our ticket uh, timeout and renewal and such. And also we're defining a maximum tolerance for computer clock synchronization. And what that means is if you're assigned a Kerberos ticket and there's a difference of over five minutes, the ticket's going to be invalid and it can't be used. So that is the Kerberos part. The next, there's one more Kerberos setting we set, and that's going to actually be in the local policies here instead of account policies. And then we would go to security options and scroll down to network security, configure encryption types allowed for Kerberos. Your goal should be to have uh, these three values selected when you're done. If you have a lot of legacy clients in your environment, you may want to enable all of these and slowly disable them one by one to see what gets affected. So I'm going to set those in the strongest way possible. And you can disable AES-128. However, I would not because there may be some things that use that encryption to um, because the, the encryption is not as... Uh, important as the speed is in that situation. So you want to leave that up just in case you have anything like that going on. <clears throat> so uh, another thing here, notice I have do not store land manager hash value on the next password change. I'm setting this via group policy because I want to enforce it that somebody can't change it where an attacker goes onto a machine and changes the settings to help them escalate privilege and whatever they need to do. An LM hash or land manager hash is basically as good as having the password. 
the encryption algorithm is weak and it's reversible. Um, this is a default setting, and like I said, we're setting this um, uh, to ensure it doesn't get changed, is the idea. Uh, and also to cover some of the settings we passed by up here real quick, what these do is enable SMB signing in our environment. So network client is, of course, the, say, a desktop computer, and network server is, say, a file server. Now your desktop computer can also be a server because if uh, network is it's discoverable on your network, other um, devices on that network can go to the IP address or host name that resolves and um, access that device via SMB and view the files and such. So we want to set this both server and client settings for desktops and servers. And notice here we have digitally signed communication always. We set that to enabled. Digitally signed communication if server agrees, enabled. And we set those, we mirror those settings in Microsoft Network Server for digitally signed communications and digitally signed communications if client agrees. Uh, notice here I also have this value set for Microsoft Network Client send unencrypted password to third party SMB servers. Default is uh, the default value is disabled, so you don't need to set this. We're setting this so an attacker can't change it, is what that we're doing. Um, another one I have set here is the SPN target name validation level and turning that off. And this policy controls the level of validation a computer with shared folders or printers, the server, performs on a service principal name that is provided by the client computer when it establishes a session name using the server message block protocol. So we're turning that off so that SBN is not required or validated by the SMB server from the SMB client. <clears throat> um, next thing we covered that, we are land manager authentication level. So um, in your environment, if you can, you want to set this to send NTLM version 2 response only and refuse LM and NTLM. LM, or that land manager hash, as I mentioned before, is reversible. And NTLM, the danger with that is there are extensive rainbow tables out there for cracking a hash, you could say. However, the hash, an NTLM hash, is also passable, so it's vulnerable to a pass the hash attack, in which having that hash allows me as an attacker to pass it to a remote device and it views me as being authenticated. So that's why you want to eliminate that from your environment wherever possible. Uh, if you're not able to do that, it's using send NTLM version 2 response only and refuse LM means that NTLM version 2 is going to be tried first and then NTLM will be tried after that if it fails. Um, so one of these settings should be defined in your environment. Um, for the minimum session security, we want to ensure everything's strong, so we're using 128-bit encryption and require NTLM version 2 session security. We want to set that for both values here, uh, ones for including uh, clients and ones for servers. Uh, so that's everything we need to set under security options. The Let me check my next settings here. We have security options, all those. We have our MS security guide, which was the ADMX template we added, so we don't need to set that. Uh, one thing we're going to set here as well, which is kind of related in uh, the general form, is if we go to administrative templates, network, and then uh, Landman workstation, and you can see enable and secure guest logons. I have that as disabled. And if you disable this policy, the SMB client will reject insecure guest logons. So this ensures that basically um, uh, encryption is used. So that is that setting. We can also use hardened UNC paths. <clears throat> Um, this is kind of, basically these use SMB, the SMB protocol is why I'm defining these. But what we're doing here is we're forcing require mutual authentication and require integrity for these UNC paths. Now this asterisk here is a wildcard value, so that's saying all servers that have a net logon uh, network share apply these settings to. And we're saying the same thing for sysvol. We can also change those values. So uh, 
let me get to that location real quick. So if I'm in network, I go to network provider, hardened UNC paths. And now if I scroll down and click show, if I were to do something such as this, what I'm saying is every server and every um, share should have require mutual authentication and require integrity. You can also define individual shares by doing something like this. And now that specific server and that specific share are requiring mutual authentication and integrity. Uh, so you want to be um, uh, generous in trying in applying these because you don't want to break any kind of communication. Uh, but it's a good idea to have at least NetLogon and Sysvol uh, protected or hardened in your environment. Um, <clears throat> for the next part here, I'm not really going to cover that. But basically, this setting here is what allows uh, the user configuration and the group and the computer configuration group policy to be applied, uh, even though the settings are set in the same uh, group policy object. And what this was doing is preventing users from sharing files within their profile. We set that to enabled, and that way if I'm an attacker, I can't share a file. Uh, also, you don't want to have users sharing files using this method and then forgetting they've done that, where you have open um, uh, network shares all over the place. So that is the reason for that configuration. I have covered, I believe, everything I wanted to in this video. Feel free to leave comments below and subscribe. Thank you for watching.